All right. We have 24 participants already. Hi, everyone. We're just uh, getting going here, waiting as people begin to call in. Welcome to this call. Um, my name is Alexandra Bradbury. I'm the editor of Labor Notes, and uh, we are joined by several activists from UPS tonight and uh, from Teamsters for Democratic Union. Uh, so I can see the, uh, the participants beginning to, uh, to check in, and we'll, we'll give it a, a couple minutes as people arrive, and then we'll get going uh, with tonight's panelists. Um, maybe while people chime in, I'll say a few words about Labor Notes, uh, which has been the voice of union activists who want to put the movement back in the labor movement since 1979. Uh, we organize a, a conference every two years. We organize local troublemaker schools. We publish a number of books. And, uh, and we organize uh, events like this um, to bring rank and filers from different unions together to learn about one another's struggles and uh, learn what we can from each other's fights and build a fighting labor movement. So um, uh, many of you are joining by video uh, through Zoom, uh, and you've got a link in your email explaining how to do that, uh, which means that you'll be able to ask questions. So we're going to hear from our panelists first, and then, uh, and then we'll take as many questions as we can. So at any point, if you have a question, you can click the Q&A at the bottom of your screen and type in your question, and that way we'll be able to, um, to, to pull as many different questions as we can uh, once we get to that section. If you're calling by phone, there's no easy way to ask a question. So, uh, so I encourage people to call in by the video feature if you can. Um, and if you're watching on the Facebook live stream, you can leave a comment on the, on the stream and um, we'll be glancing through those and, and try to relay as many of those questions as we can as well. So uh, uh, the numbers are climbing up here. Um, we'll uh, give it another moment as people check in. Uh, this is the first time Labor Notes has done a video call like this. Uh, so it's a, it's a test for us of, of how this technology uh, uh, can work for this kind of, um, this kind of a setting. Uh, I can begin to say who our panelists are um, as people log on. So uh, we're lucky to, have, um, to have, have three great panelists as well as I know a number of other, um, of other people on the call uh, from UPS uh, who can chime in. Uh, but we're going to hear from Nick Perry, who is a delivery driver in Columbus, Ohio, Teamsters Local 413. We're going to hear from Kristen Turns, uh, who is a, a part-time uh, inside worker on, on the ramp at the Dallas-Fort Worth Airport, in Local 767 in Dallas. And we're going to hear from Beth Breslau, who's an organizer with Teamsters for a Democratic Union. And also on the call, um, there are, uh, uh, I, I know um, Ken Pass, uh, the national organizer for TDU, is, is here with us tonight. I believe um, John Palmer, one of the, the international vice presidents um, of the union, is, is on the call. And I know many UPS workers are on the call. Uh, many people who've, who've been active on, uh, on, on building this, the, the Vote No movement and um, uh, um, you know, many people who, who can chime into this conversation. So um, we have, looks like about 100 people have, uh, have joined us um, thus far, and uh, the number is ticking up as the moments go by. Um, but let's go ahead and, uh, and get started. Um, I'll just say a, a couple of introductory words about what has happened thus far, though I think probably most of you have called in um, because you've been, been reading it uh, or living it, and um, and, and following this, this exciting uh, series of events very closely. Um, but folks will know that the, the contract campaign at UPS um, this year, there's been a real groundswell uh, from below with, with rank and file workers, um, both, both drivers and inside workers, pushing uh, for, for serious improvements um, in, uh, uh, in, in the, the wage paid to part-timers and um, and uh, drivers I know pushing for, for a solution to excessive overtime and harassment and surveillance. Um, but instead the contract that the international came back with um, did uh, little to address those concerns, raised the, the part-time wage um, less than people were demanding with no catch-up raises, um, did, did little to address those problems and, and contained this, uh, this two-tier wage uh, for, for drivers that would be a real, um, a real step back, a real concession uh, by creating this, this hybrid driver position. Uh, so people organized for a vote no with the, with the backing of Teamsters for Democratic Union and uh, 
and many Teamster activists around the country. Uh, and, and when the results came in, 54% uh, uh, had voted it down. Um, uh, however, the, the, in a dramatic turn of events, the international uh, declared the contract ratified regardless under, a, under a, a loophole in the constitution that said that unless you had a, a majority turnout, you would have to have two thirds voting no for it to really be considered uh, not ratified. Um, although they also said they're going back to the table, so there's certainly some hemming and hawing going on at the top. Um, meanwhile, the UPS freight contract, people will know, was decisively rejected. And, uh, and several of the regional supplements to the UPS contract as well. So um, this has ignited a lot of anger. Uh, and, and I think people will be eager to hear what's next, um, but also just want to, whoop, dropping my headphone. Also just, just want to take a, mo a few moments to celebrate the, the tremendous victory that rank and filers won by organizing this, this no vote in spite of uh, heavy pressure from both the company and the, uh, the union leadership to vote yes. Uh, it was a huge bump up from, um, from the, the turnout and the, and the level of, of no votes last time to what people were able to achieve this time really in, in the face of serious pressure. Um, so, uh, so we have three, three panelists who are gonna, gonna speak today about both about, about how they achieved that um, and about what's next and what rank and filers are gonna do um, to to, to, to change the union um, going forward, to make sure these problems are addressed in the next contract, what's gonna happen with this contract. Uh, so without further ado, I wanna introduce uh, the three people you're gonna hear from today. Um, as they speak, if you have questions that you know you wanna ask, you can go ahead and chime in with them through the Q&A feature. So it's, if you're looking on the screen, it's down at the bottom of your screen, you just click Q&A, type your question. Uh, and we'll, we'll take as many of those as we can when we get to the Q&A section. If you're watching on the Facebook live stream, you can ask your question by commenting on the live stream. Um, if you're listening by phone, there's no easy way to do it. So try and tune in through one of those video uh, methods. Um, there, were, there was a link that was emailed to you uh, or, or you could send an email to chris at labornotes.org and uh, he'll, he'll try and screen those questions as well. Okay, so our first uh, speaker we're going to hear from is Nick Perry. He is a delivery driver in Columbus, Ohio, as well as a steward. Um, and uh, Nick, take it away. All right, thanks, Al. Um, like Al said, I'm a package car driver in uh, Columbus, Ohio. I've been at UPS uh, for 12 years now. I've uh, been a steward for eight of those years, uh, both on the inside and uh, as a package car driver. Um, we're from uh, Local 413 in Columbus, Ohio, which a little bit of background uh, for us is we have uh, international vice president here who we're lucky to have who's on the Teamsters United ticket. So people were following that. Teamsters United was the slate that um, ran against Hoffa. Um, we got very uh, fortunate to have someone like that strong here who can uh, try to take on Hoffa uh, for implementing this contract. So I wanna uh, just start out with that, kind of giving you background about me and, and where I'm from. I wanna go over uh, our contract campaign and how it started and the kind of long bumpy road that it was uh, until uh, just recently in DC where I attended the vote count. Um, and we got in a spirited uh, debate with uh, brother Dennis Taylor, who's our uh, chairman of our uh, uh, co-chairman of the package division. So uh, we started a long time ago, kind of IDing Nick, Nick, you seem to be frozen. Uh, okay, um, we'll wait a moment and see if Nick can get unfrozen and uh, um, maybe go ahead and turn to Christian and then we'll, uh, we'll come back to Nick when he, when he gets his, um, his uh, computer fixed. So um, Kristen turns, mm -hmm. his, uh, uh, works on the, on the ramp um, at the Dallas, Dallas Fort Worth Airport uh, where she is a, um, is, uh, uh, I'm sorry, I'm trying to control this at the same time as I speak. Um, uh, but so where she's an activist at uh, UPS, where she's worked for many years, um, and is also part of an effort that uh, uh, workers are getting together to run for office and change their local leadership. Uh, so uh, Kristen, take it away. And we'll, we'll come back to Nick when he gets back on. 
Am I frozen? I am Kristen Turns, and uh, I have been employed by UPS since 1999. I am a proud member of Teamsters Local Union 767, where I have served as a steward, and I've also had a unique insight to the inner trappings of our local uh, as a local union office staff. Um, it's important to understand that with this vote no movement, uh, local 767 down here in DFW, Dallas, Fort Worth, uh, historically votes yes on contracts and not by a small margin. Uh, in 2013, we voted 82% uh, in favor of uh, passing that contract. Uh, contrast that with this year and a very heavy uh, local and of course national vote no campaign. Uh, and, and that was started locally by uh, our union sisters, uh, Debbie Jennings and Andrea Dollar and I grew into a two month local campaign. But uh, the statistic on uh, that would be 57% of us as a result of those efforts voted down the contract. We doubled the amount of Teamster members who showed up to vote, um, which was a historic vote for our local. And um, we had, uh, like I said, we had uh, almost 2,700 members uh, our local is uh, just shy of about 8,000 members at this particular point. So uh, we're kind of lateral in terms of uh, voter turnout and uh, the national vote, which was 54% uh, vote no turning down the contract with the rest of the country. Now, um, as a result of the contract, which we, the tentative agreement that we did not uh, particularly appreciate in full, and uh, its supplement down here in the South, which we also weren't uh, in approval of. Uh, there was a reformist uh, group called 767 Teamsters United for Change uh, that uh, emerged uh, led by uh, our presidential candidate uh, nominee, Brian Perrier. And uh, for several months, we have uh, gone to the gates at all the outlying centers for UPS multiple times. In fact, uh, they were out there today campaigning in the rain in DFW yesterday, multiple times the day before that. And uh, we're not stopping because we don't appreciate what uh, having this contract shoved down our throats. Uh, we were very upset about uh, all of the literature that arrived to our homes uh, and uh, in enormous amounts every day. Sometimes I got two or three notifications that this contract was fantastic. I've never seen anything like that before in any of the contracts that I've ever been through with this company. So uh, that was uh, one of the biggest reasons why we felt like it was time for us to uh, get rid of the Hoffa old guard officials that were in our local and uh, move toward uh, something that listened and focused more to members wants and needs. And uh, that is exactly what uh, we're doing with 767 Teamsters United for Change right now. Um, our uh, local union uh, election is coming up uh, in November. And uh, we do feel that our vote no snapshot uh, of our local Teamsters 767 uh, is a, a very good indicator at 50% uh, voting down the contract that uh, people want change and that they would like to feel as if they are being listened to and that their voices matter, um, that they are gonna be included in uh, future efforts, not only by the Teamsters, but also by our employers as well. And uh, we hope that we're going to be able to uh, uh, get all of the movement that we've uh, put forth so far off the ground shortly in the coming year and be able to serve the membership in that capacity. Right. Do we have uh, Nick back or? No, you're muted. Am I back? Can you guys hear me? Sorry, uh, internet issues. Okay. I'll just add one last thing uh, before you start, Nick. One of, one of the biggest problems that we have, and, and I'll let Nick talk about this a little bit more because I know he wants to get into uh, the, what we call the 224 
uh, part of the contract. Uh, and that is, for those of you that are unfamiliar with uh, UPS, uh, that was the uh, hybrid driver position that was uh, put forth and created. And um, it basically it would have uh, entail having lower wages for weekend drivers, essentially doing the same work as our ground drivers. Uh, but at my hub specifically, we've already had these combination positions uh, for workers who were inside and outside, and we called them 22-3 combination positions. Um, at just my one hub, we had 118 families that were affected by uh, the decision to uh, move an entire sort to another facility or area. Uh, the workers were not allowed to follow their positions, and so they had to work split shifts for almost a decade. Uh, they are still trying to figure out that situation. Uh, it's caused a lot of problems uh, for all of these workers. I've seen people sleep in the parking lot. Um, I've seen people become very ill. I have a friend who's very ill right now um, because of, her, of all the stress of having to go through what she's done at work. And um, my feeling on that is that if the company and the union cannot collectively get together and figure out some sort of a compromise to address the combination uh, hybrid positions, if you will, that are already implemented in all areas of the United States, then uh, why, what proof do we have that uh, this new position, which we're calling 22-4, is going to be any better? And I'll, I'll end with that. Great, thanks so much, Kristen. Um, and I can see the questions are, are starting to roll in already. I, I know an, a number of people are, are wanting to talk about how the international is getting away with this, if they're getting away with it, and, and where things go from here. Um, but I wanna turn first to Nick to, to, to just look back a little bit about where the campaign has come this far and, uh, and how you did it. So uh, Nick, take it away. Sorry, I'll, I'll uh, apologize for my internet. I don't know what's going on. Time Warner is not a good internet provider. So, all right. Um, so we started uh, with identifying issues coming out of TD organizing and Teamsters United campaign. Um, we built a list of all those people that were active. We uh, contacted them, asked them uh, what's going on in their area. And then, uh, you know, we started issuing kind of really good uh, contract proposals. Even the, the union even released the contract proposals um, at, that they gave to the company, and they were very strong. I remember calling everyone that I knew and saying, hey, these are pretty good proposals, and I could, uh, I could really rally behind them. Our 9-5 proposal, which is uh, our right to restricted overtime as package car drivers, um, was really strong and it, it included an automatic opt-in because it's often challenging to even get on the list because you face some intimidation and harassment to even get on the list and then it included a automatic opt uh, or automatic penalty uh, payment on your check which now you have to go through a grievance hearing um, and, uh, and and they can take a few weeks a few months depending on your local union so it would just get factored in just like over time and uh, they would pay you so that, that all got scrapped uh, in, in, the, uh, current, in, the, in the current agreement, uh, just completely thrown away almost all the good proposals that we had that we all backed behind and, and rallied behind, all just got thrown away. Um, so I, I think Kristen talked about one of the key ones that we're all against, which is this 22-4 proposal um, comes on the heels. Uh, what it means is the, it's the Article 22, Article 22 Section 4 it just means what's called a hybrid position, the first position known where it's um, you're kind of splitting a part-time job with doing driving, even though we know most of them will just be doing driving at a lesser rate. So they want them to make the current um, inside rate for package car driving, which package car driving is a higher paid position. So it's creating that two-tier uh, system. So when that came out, it kind of it was a curveball, no one really saw it coming, but so we really r rallied uh, around the country. We had 50 contract, uh, we had contract unity week where we had 50 locations that did rallies and um, parking lot signs or petitions or anything that you could do to get out and show the company and the union that we were against this. Uh, and it worked really well. We knew the last time we had like a 30% turnout across the country. It was very unlikely we'd hit over 50%. Uh, UPS is a very large company with a large part-time workforce. It was uh, very unlikely we hit 50%, but we could hit the two-thirds threshold. 
and we came pretty close. Uh, we increased the 44% turnout, which was pretty impressive, over 30,000 more votes this time than last time, and with 54% voted no and uh, voted down 10 supplements, although five were ratified because of this kind of uh, uh, bogus uh, you know, interpretation or whatever of the Constitution that they didn't use last time. Last time, if they would have used this, we wouldn't have been talking about all those um, historic rejected amount of supplements. We would have been talking about just a handful of them. So I'm um, sorry, I don't know all, what all you touched on, but I can come back and, and take any questions as long as I don't get kicked off on the internet here. Great, thanks very much, Nick. Um, and uh, uh, I'm gonna uh, turn it over now to um, Beth, who is at, uh, at Team Sure Democratic Union, has been in touch with UPSers around the country um, and can uh, and can say a little more about um, where things stand now and uh, and and where where folks are looking next. Uh, Beth, go ahead. So um, Kristen and Nick did, I think, a really great job summarizing sort of how we got here. It's been, like Nick said, a long road uh, to get a much much stronger no vote than ever before um, and a much much higher turnout than uh, certainly the 2013 contract where. Surprise, there was no two thirds rule um, pushing through the supplements, a uh, number of supplements that were rejected um, with less than a 50% turnout and less than a two thirds majority were renegotiated. Um, so but we'll get to that. Uh, where we are now, so the, you know, through activity at the buildings, parking lot activity, um, social media, Facebook, um, rank and file videos like Tyler Binder's viral videos, um, We've identified, you know, people are coming out of the woodwork wanting to do something about this. And so uh, by no means are we taking a step back. Uh, Nobody is, you know, taking a break to lick their wounds or feel discouraged. Um, people are feeling energized and ready to fight. So looking ahead, um, PDU has our, our annual convention coming up um, in just a few weeks where we're going to hold a vote no summit uh, to sort of prepare activists and members to hit the ground running. Um, and peak season is going to come and sort of knock people out a little bit. But um, every fall, there are local union elections, um, and every local union has an election every three years. So between now and 2021, um, all of these local unions where members have voted down the, the contract um, and looked to their local union leadership to say, do you have our back or not? All of those locals, like in Dallas uh, 767 and New York City Local 804 um, and various locals around the country, sort of now it's like a a reckoning moment for these local officials um, to have to take responsibility um, and members get to hold you know, their leadership accountable. Um, and in the next three years, uh, every local is gonna have this happening. Every local official is gonna hopefully be held to, you know, held to the fire. Um, and so TDU is gonna be uh, bringing activists and members together from around the country um, to sort of share strategies and uh, make plans to run for local union office, prepare to run for delegates uh, for the constitutional convention and nominating convention so that members can have more power, more control over how we change the constitution. Members can you know, send delegates to the constitutional convention and get rid of the two thirds rule um, and make sure that there is real democracy in, in the contract votes in the future moving forward. Um, and put real leaders, international union leaders on the ballot and give members a better, a better option um, in 2021 to vote for, for true leadership. Um, so I think, I mean, for, for me, oh, the other thing, I guess, to keep in mind sort of while all this chaos is going on um, at the sort of national package side, um, we've also got, like Al mentioned, the UPS freight contract that was voted down decisively, met the two thirds muster. Um, and so the union's gonna give a 30 day notice to, ex to end the contract extension. Um, those members have also taken a strike authorization vote already. Um, hopefully they'll reach a good deal. Um, hopefully they'll reach a good deal before Thanksgiving. Um, a lot of the issues on, that, on the UPS freight side um, are sort of similar. There was a two tier um, proposal in that contract too. Um, pathetic wage increases, um, concessions in healthcare, and their number one issue is subcontracting of road work. Um, so there's a lot of job security concerns on that contract. 
Um, some of you probably also saw Al's good article on Local 705 in Chicago. Um, they, 705 in Chicago is under its own independent contract. They're not covered under the international, uh, the national master agreement um, at UPS. So they're preparing to hit, hold a strike vote in early November. They're prepared to end their extension. Um, and they're sort of doing the work now of mobilizing members um, to be more prepared to take action. Uh, so I, I know that there's lots of questions. Um, so that's it for me. Great. And, and Beth, a, a quick question that uh, somebody asked through chat. What is the date of the Vote No Summit that you mentioned? It's going to be at the TDU convention, which is going to be in Chicago. Um, not next weekend, not the weekend after. November 2nd, 3rd, and 4th. Um, and, you know, anybody can visit tdu.org uh, to get more information about the convention. Um, our phone number is there. You can call our offices. Um, and we can help you make your travel arrangements, you know, figure out where you're going to stay and we want to get you there. Great. All right. We have a number of questions that have rolled in, so we'll begin to turn to those in a moment. Um, but first I'll remind uh, people if, if you didn't uh, uh, hear before that if you want to ask a question, if you're watching on the movie, you can click Q and uh, your question allow us to Put a selection of possible watching on the Facebook stream. You can type it into the, the comments. Um, Nick, were you waving that you wanted to, to say something bef before we turn to questions to pick up on Beth's point? Yeah, just uh, just something small that I think um, some people who are maybe newer, at the, like maybe this is their first contract, uh, don't realize, like uh, Beth was just saying, at every one of our conventions, Teamster conventions, every five years, we can propose changes to the Constitution. Well, Fred Zuckerman, who was running it at the time as uh, our presidential candidate of Teamsters United, had a number of demands that we changed to our Teamster Constitution, and we took to the floor. Um, and if anyone there has been a delegate before, I was a delegate, I was there standing at the mics uh, when you're getting screamed at uh, and belittled uh, because you want to you know, put, put forward some progressive changes that would have stopped uh, this exact uh, thing from happening. Uh, Fred was uh, wasn't even allowed to present half of them on the floor. We were we were told we were out of order. So just the the follow up on that from Beth. This this is very important stuff to think about. This is a political problem as well as a problem for us at work every day about this contract. And I'll add to that also, if if I might. Um, we voted in John Palmer, uh, our vice president, um, and uh, that and he's not even allowed to enter our local. Um, we've requested that he come speak to us. He is our vice president, and uh, thus far that has not happened, and he has not been uh, allowed, uh, which is incredibly unfair, uh, given that that's completely political, and we'd like to definitely see a change in that. And, and another point that I forgot to mention that's very important about one of the things about the contract that, uh, that really gave us a boost for vote no in the end was when uh, Amazon announced that they were going to begin starting their employees at $15 an hour. And our contract uh, offered uh, $13 an hour, uh, which meant that our employees would only catch up to Amazon's uh, with uh, the same sort of benefits after four and a half years. And uh, we can't allow uh, non-union companies to come in and start setting the bar for uh, union companies, uh, specifically when we have, you know, the Teamsters involved, one of the strongest labor unions in the world. And so I think that that got a lot of people uh, very excited about uh, getting out the vote, getting to the gates, and actually submitting ballots. They weren't happy with that. Great, thank you, Kristen. Um, so let's take some questions. I'm gonna try uh, unmuting. I'll, I'll, I'll call on you and I'll unmute you. Uh, you can ask directly. We'll see if that, if that function works, but I, I will ask people to keep, keep the question very brief. We're gonna try to get, get to as many as we can, uh, but, but we've gotta wrap the call up at 10. So um, I'm gonna start by calling on Robert Colstead, and if you would uh, introduce yourself and, uh, and then pose the question. Oh, can you hear me? 
Yes, we can. Oh, wow. Okay, that's pretty good. I actually wrote my question in, and I am not a UPS Teamster, although I am a Teamster, and I did work on getting a no vote in Minnesota quite a bit because we didn't have, uh, well, there weren't a lot of UPSers in our organization, but we did do a lot of work around it, so I've been paying attention. And when we found out that this contract was going to be um, ratified or whatever you want to call it, um, we started doing a little bit of research around that. And so we actually looked at the bylaw language and my interpretation of the language was that in order to, um, to, 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 to implement it, um, there had to be <clears throat> less than two thirds that voted no. And there also had to be less than two thirds that voted um, to authorize a strike. And it seems to me that um, the no vote here didn't meet that definition. So there was no strike on the table at the time of the no vote for the contract. And also there was a, um, there was a strike authorization vote that happened prior to the voting on the contract. So it seems to me that um, just as a pure like, you know, language or, or the interpretation of what the sentences say that Hoffa is out of line imposing the contract. Now, it also says that um, Hoff or the general president is the, has the last word as far as what, um, what the meaning of those words are. But um, I'd just like to hear, what, is, there anybody, is there anybody challenging this or taking them to court? Or is there, um, you know, some way to kind of deal with it? I mean, from a sort of a legalistic standpoint like that. Got it. Okay, thanks for the question. Uh, who, wants to, who wants to answer that? Uh, I can speak to this if you can uh, hear me out. Yes. Okay, just a little choppy on my end. Okay, um, uh, Brother Cole said I'm uh, not a legal guy. I'm just, just a driver and a steward. So but I, I, I was at the vote count, and uh, it was really misleading what Brother Taylor said. Uh, there was kind of a recording of the, uh, of the vote count. It was a live stream kind of like this, and then uh, audio just like this. So as soon as he said, uh, as soon as the results came out, he said, uh, I think he said something like it's ratified, but I'm going to go back to the table uh, and we'll talk with the company. The members have spoken, you know, blah, blah, blah. We were there. And um, so it was kind of confusing, but we all were really excited in the room. There was 13 of us. And then he turned the recording off and he turned around to us and a brother from 89, local 89, which is Louisville, Kentucky, uh, brother Stephen Pierce, he said, so do you plan to oppose the contract? And he said, well, yeah, it's ratified. Well, how is it ratified? You just said you're going to go back to the table. So then we kind of got in a spirited uh, debate like Teamsters would. And uh, we mentioned, well, hey, look, uh, what kind of leverage do you have if you just told the company and us that the contract's ratified, but you're going to go back to them and ask them to change things? And then I asked, well, if they change things, we're going to have the right to vote on it. Well, no, you're not going to have the right to vote on it. You just ratified it. So, brother, you're going to go to the table, ask the company to change things. We're not going to have the right to vote on it. I don't think you're going to have much leverage there. Um, and uh, he didn't like that very much. He got pretty, he got pretty defensive. He's a pretty defensive guy. Um, so I don't know legally what, they, you can, what you can do. I know we are going to make it a political problem because that's really what this is. Our constitution at least seemed to me pretty clear, but it's political suicide if you were to invoke that language, which is why Ken Hall didn't invoke it last time in 2013, because they knew there's no way in hell they'd be there today if they invoked that uh, in 2013. So I can pass it over to anyone else that kind of has the more of a legal brain on this, but that's, uh, that's what I think. Does anyone else want to speak to this question? I think Nick gave a pretty, a pretty adequate and, and smart answer. Um, it's a, you know, it's a constitutional loophole. Um, the constitution is interpreted by the general president. Uh, and it's hard to sort of, it's hard to say, okay, yeah, you know, let's, let's sue and, and maybe the precedent will be the wrong one, right? Um, a federal judge is not necessarily going to side with the rank and file. Um, a federal judge might sort of do what's going to be best for the company. Um, and that's maybe not a gamble worth taking, especially if we know that the real, the real way to fix it, like Nick is saying, this is a political problem. Um, the real solution is to get rid of the language of the Constitution. And the, the only way we can do that is 
by getting enough delegates to the Constitutional Convention in 2021. Okay, so the next question we're going to take is from Ralph Izararas in uh, Sacramento, California. Uh, Ralph, you're on the air. Yes, hello. Thank you for taking my question. Um, a lot of us here in Sacramento feel or they think that the Constitution is ratified and there's nothing else going on further, like conferences like this call. So I've been trying to spread the news and um, I want to get a definitive answer on what is being done, something that I could take home and tell those guys tonight, something simple that I could could spread about uh, what we're doing and where they could go for information. And that would be my question. Good question. So um, members can always check the UPS Teamsters United.org website or tdu.org um, for updates. This is a developing story. It's sort of, you know, I think somebody mentioned earlier, we're sort of staying tuned to see what happens. Um, members have done a really amazing job keeping pressure on the international with good positive news coverage um, that keep, you know, if this has been in the headlines uh, way more than I ever would have expected. Um, and, you know, kind of keeping pressure on the company, keeping pressure on the international union and keeping pressure on your local union officials. Um, members have done a really good job of that. We have a petition available online and a printable version that members can be using um, to sort of pressure Hoffa to return to the table. Um, and those are all on, on our websites, tdu.org and um, upsteamstersunited.org. Um, and you can always get in touch with our office for additional tools. Um, a couple members have told me that they've been printing out uh, the TDU article that explains the two thirds rule and how it was, how the international was able to use it in this context um, to give people an understanding of how did this happen and how do we change it in the future. Um, so that's, those are a couple of tools you may want to try, brother. And I think uh, one thing that's happening right now that's really uh, uh, useful is there's seven international vice presidents who have all written letters they're all around on there on Facebook. Um, and if you need, need them, I'm sure you can get in touch with Teamsters United and they can give you copies of them. So they're calling on the International Executive Board to, to kind of raise this question uh, in their formal gatherings. Uh, you know, they're not going to do that unless there's more international vice presidents that, that hop on board. That seems unlikely. Uh, but, you know, you could always call international vice president who hasn't signed on yet and tell them. Hey, we, we want you to sign on with this. Um, you're going to be up for election in 2021. There aren't that many of you. And seven of you already said uh, that this needs to be changed and this contract shouldn't be ratified. So. Could I add a little, Al? Sure, go ahead. This is, um, I'm Ken Paff. I, I work for Teamsters for Democratic Union, TDU National Organizer. I'm happy to work with these great people who are speaking and those who are on the call. Um, as has been said, uh, I think Brother Kolstad asked a good question. Unfortunately, the Constitution does give them the power to, to do this. They didn't have to, but they have the power under the Teamster Constitution. There's no federal law requiring any vote whatsoever on a labor contract. Teamster Constitution said, Hoffa signs the contract, that's it, you're done. That would be lawful. Now, the Constitution doesn't say that, but it does give them, unfortunately, this kind of leeway. In answer to the brother from Sacramento, another excellent question, I think, that questions have been given, it's, it's, uh, it's in flux, as was said. Uh, one thing that, uh, as Nick said, um, Taylor was pressured to say, well, I'm going back to the company for more. Well, we should be listing our demands and people across the country should be voicing those demands and not just the seven vice presidents to put the heat on them. There's heat coming from other quarters as well. Local 705 has a separate contract in Chicago. They are not under the national agreement. They have 8,500 Teamsters at the largest distribution hub in the country that isn't a, uh, an air hub at the so-called CATCH, the Chicago Area Consolidation Hub. They say they're gonna either get a good contract at the next table, they're gonna get reasonable proposals, or they're gonna move to end the extension on their contract. And frankly, that would be a powerful move. And I hope the members there 
push on that. And I hope the leaders continue to take that stand and everybody in the country should support them because they're standing up for everyone and they are not bound by the national agreement. Well, following up on that, Adam Young had a question about what's happening in Chicago. Adam, uh, you are uh, uh, on the air. Adam Young, are you there? Adam, we can't hear you. All right, well, we may need to come back to Adam. Uh, uh, we'll try again to call on him. Um, so uh, let's, let's go to a question from Gilman Bagga. Gilman, uh, are you with us? Uh, yes. All right, go ahead. Um, I mean, as the question says, um, I know that in long term, what we need to do is vote in progressive officials to the local and national unions, but is there anything we can do about contract ratification right now? Can we leverage peak season in any way? Can we like threaten a sick in? I mean, I don't know. Yeah. Who wants to uh, address that? I can, uh, I can try to uh, try to take it. I mean, personally, uh, I mean, look, I don't know how good it'll do to, to pressure other international vice presidents, but that's what I was mentioning before. Um, I think that is, it's pretty worthwhile. There aren't that many. It doesn't, it's not that hard to call. Uh, I, I've called and, you know, they're not going to respond, but, you know, I mean, you know, if they get 200 calls, maybe that's something else. Um, I don't know how worthwhile it is, but I think that's a good avenue to put a lot of pressure on because there aren't that many people. Um, a sick in, uh, I think that's, um, seems to be, a, you know, it sounds good. Uh, but it would take a lot of organizing and a lot of um, membership participation that wouldn't be supported by the international and would most likely result, you know, I mean, if, if you do it in Columbus, Ohio, they're just going to run the work around you and fire one in Columbus, Ohio. So uh, it, it wouldn't happen. <laughs> I don't know. I don't, we couldn't call a nationwide sick in, uh, you know, I, I mean, I'm a package car driver. I'm pissed off. Um, these hybrid drivers are going to be the end of the, uh, good package car job. Uh, it's, it's a miserable contract. It was, you know, kind of sold to us bad. Look, I'm pissed off about it too. I don't think a sick in is the, is the right answer. I think you're going to, you know, don't do it. If, if you're thinking about it, you're going to get fired. I think, um, Ken sort of mentioned this, um, a little bit earlier too. Uh, and this is sort of in line with what Nick was saying also, um, in a lot of areas, this is a good opportunity to start getting people to People, people took more action in a lot of places around this contract than they ever have as union members. Um, and this was a, an entry point for a lot of people who have not been that engaged with the union in the past. Um, albeit, this is a tough entry point since, hey, the first time you vote, uh, guess what? It doesn't matter. But I think a lot of members from around the country, um, even if you don't have a local union election this fall or something, are, are continuing to have parking lot meetings or continuing to be engaging with members at the buildings, you know, where it's visible to management, having a little meeting before work um, and walking into the building together to show management that you're united, um, starting to try and enforce the contract more strongly than you have in the past, maybe getting people to file on supervisors working for the first time ever um, instead of letting it slide or demanding your eight when they try to send you home early. There are small things that people can start doing uh, to get people's feet wet, um, you know, to sort of build to something bigger, uh, you got to start somewhere. And I think that was sort of what Nick was saying, you know, sometimes you have to walk before you run. And in a lot of areas where people haven't wanted to walk before or haven't been able to mobilize people to start walking before, um, that's starting to happen more. Um, we're going to try again to call on Adam Young, who had the question about seem like having a problem with small before. Um, so uh, I'm attempting to mute Adam. Uh, Adam, try again. Adam, we can't hear you. Uh, 
Can you can you try asking your question again? All right. Looks like it's, uh, we're not going to be able to hear him, so I'm going to go ahead and read that question. Um, he had written, I saw earlier Chicago is threatening to strike at the beginning of peak. How do we get every hub on board? Anyone? This is, I think this is pretty similar. Somebody else could jump in, but I think this is pretty similar to the question that was just asked. Um, there's, we're have, you know, we don't have the backing of the International Union to mobilize that kind of action. Um, we're trying to get more local union officials and stewards uh, oriented towards action, um, but action on that scale um, is not necessarily something that's feasible in the next two months um, before peak season, but I encourage other people to chime in too. Al, can you repeat the question? Because it, it cut out. When oh, sorry. Yeah, so the question said, I saw earlier Chicago is threatening to strike the beginning of peak. How do we get every hub on board with this? So I guess, I guess there might be a, a clarification needed of whether, whether the questioner is asking, should every hub strike or, which I think Beth is saying that's not, or is there a, a, you know, is there a way other hubs can help support Chicago? Perhaps that's part of the question. Did anybody else want to chime in on that one? Quick comment, Al, this is Ken. Um, if it would come to a strike in Chicago, and you can bet your life savings that Hoffa will be in bed with the company to try to head that off. But if there is a strike, it is in the Teamster Constitution that you have, I mean, excuse me, in the labor contract with UPS nationally that you have a right to respect the picket line at your primary place of employment, i.e. at your UPS building. And they could send out pickets. Now the international would very likely clamp down but even a strike in Chicago, a major hub in this highly integrated company would have enormous impact. So I'm not saying there's gonna be a strike in Chicago, but they have a lot of, a lot of clout. They're not, uh, they're not helpless. And hopefully uh, the members there will push forward to try to resist some of these concessions that have been imposed nationally, including the two tier agreement. All right, we've got another question from Rosemary Stedronsky. Uh, I'm just trying to unmute here. Um, and then, uh, hang on, sorry, glitch on my end. All right, I apologize. I'm trying to unmute Rosemary so she can ask her question. Apologize, just a moment for the technical uh, difficulty here. There she was for a moment. There, all right, Rosemary, you're on the air. Sorry about that. Uh, go ahead. Okay, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Okay, um, yeah, my question was, um, and, and I think it's kind of been answered, but it basically was what, what can the members do in the future to, to change this constitutional language and other constitutional language at the next Teamster convention? Because so many people are concerned about the language and, and, as, and I, knew, I knew that Nick had, had talked about it because the guys were there at the last convention with Fred and they had tried to change this language. But I think the members need to understand what all they can do and what needs to go forward and, and in the future at, at at the lower levels, at the local levels, in order to really make the impact to change this, because this movement needs to start growing now to, to move forward for the next three years. 
Great question. Who wants to take that? I can take it. I was at the convention with Rosemary. So, hey, Rosemary. Um, I mean, the, uh, the, the answer is, yeah, what we said. I mean, every five years, you can run for delegate to go to the convention. We can change the Constitution at the next convention. Um, the, those, those elections are ran by the, by the election supervisor. They're not like a local union election. They have, uh, you can protest uh, on the national level. You can get with TDU if there's any kind of, um, you know, uh, problems with, a, with, a, with the election. Sometimes we find those in locals where there aren't often elections being ran. But the problem at the convention is that we're outnumbered. Most delegate elections go uncontested. They're just your local officers who go to Vegas and, you know, they, they go to the, they go and they wear their red vests and they act like sheep, whatever Hoffa and the whips say go. Um, when you go to the convention, it's a pretty shocking and startling thing if you're uh, against them. And if you're, you know, you're for the members or you're speaking for your brothers and sisters back home. So that happens every five years. And I encourage everyone uh, who's on here, who's a Teamster, whether you're a UPS Teamster or not. If you're just a Teamster, run for delegate. We need you to run for delegate. We need you to win. So contact TDU, tdu.org, and figure out when your delegate election would be and all that kind of good stuff. Um, like Rosemary was saying, what else you can do? Every local has a union election in the next three years, like Sister Bres uh, Breslau was saying. Um, you can do that as well. But the delegate election is where you can actually change the Constitution. Right. And that's, that's definitely coming. We're seeing a change at Local 767 already. Um, we've always been a very Hoffa strong uh, local. Uh, it was bad news for you to say out loud that you supported anyone else outside of Hoffa. Uh, and uh, I would say that that also goes for a lot of the other locals that are in the southern region. Um, so, uh, you know, we started off with having a uh, one delegate. Uh, hello, Ron Beard. You're an awesome guy. And uh, since then, um, you know, right now, what we need to do is jump in and mobilize and have uh, more people understand that uh, we can organize and uh, run as delegates together and support one another and learn more about the delegatory process so that um, we can do exactly like how Nick just explained it. Uh, change this two-thirds rule and, and everything else that needs to be addressed. Great. Uh, we've got a question now from Ernesto Diaz. Uh, Ernesto, uh, hang on. All right, Ernesto, you're on. Hello. Can, yes. can you all hear me? Uh, yes, we can. Yeah. Um, yeah, I guess my question was more to do on like, if there's been efforts on kind of breaking the isolation. Um, uh, I'm like a student myself and I'm also a part-time worker. Uh, so I just had a question on that. And I don't know if there's any locals that, have, that, that, that have been successfully like outreaching to other groups. And if y'all have any advice on that, I guess is my question. So one, one thing that members have been doing, um, you know, is to get in touch with each other beside, you know, obviously on Facebook and all across social media, members are connecting with each other. Um, another way that members have been connecting is, you know, coming to the TDU convention, holding contract meetings in their areas. Um, in the springtime, we had, uh, across the country, we had several meetings face-to-face. -face. Uh, members have held contract conference calls. Um, we've held national calls, regional calls. Um, I think there may be some members on, on this Zoom call tonight who uh, have been holding conference calls pretty regularly, um, even since the contracts were ratified since the vote count. Um, in some areas, especially ones where um, there's still negotiations to be done in the five supplements that were not ratified, um, members are making plans to keep their demands at the forefront, make sure that, you know, their concerns are met. So um, one way that you can get in touch with other members from your area is through our office here, um, the UPS Teams to United phone number, I'll announce, uh, and people can take it down is 718-693-0400. You can visit upsteamstersunited.org um, to sign up to get involved, take action, um, and coming out of the TDU convention, we're going to hold our Vote No Summit um, 
We're going to be trying to put together, or, you know, smaller organizing meetings um, in different parts of the country to help people figure out next steps and plans. Great. Uh, we just have a few minutes left, and I want to uh, take a couple of the questions that have come in by Facebook chat. Um, so here's one of them. Uh, Jonathan Bembry asks, if freight strikes, am I protected as a part-timer to stand on the line with them? Can anyone answer that? If you can stand on the UPS freight strike, yeah, you can stand on the UPS freight strike line, brother. Anyone can, absolutely. Great. Uh, here's another one that has come in by chat. Uh, uh, someone wants to know how labor activists who are not Teamsters can help support uh, TDU or support this fight. Are there concrete ways that non-Teamsters can help? Well, I think you could um, donate to the Teamster Rank and File Education Fund, which is a nonprofit. It's called TRF. Uh, and you can donate to that, which helps with uh, legal issues as well as uh, printing books like the Legal Rights of Union Stewards and the FMLA Handbook. Um, so you could donate to TRF, which would be a big help. And uh, one more question that's come in by chat. Uh, what are the next steps we need to take within the next three to six months with this contract itself? Anyone want to take that one? Kristen or Nick could share plans you have in your areas, but um, I know one thing, like I've mentioned, I think that members are doing is getting out there at your buildings and circulating petitions and flyers to keep your issues and demands in the forefront um, and keep attention on the contract and pressure on your local union officials and on the international and the company. Um, another thing that people can be doing is sort of holding calls like these, um, but for members in your own area. Uh, so, you know, have a parking lot meeting, try and meet other members from your local outside of your building um, and get people together to sort of, you know, maybe you start out running for steward um, and try and have stronger enforcement where you work. Uh, maybe that sort of launches you into a bigger project of running for local union office, preparing to run for delegate, um, building up for the 2021 international election and constitutional convention, but, you know, start, Start with something that you think is a reasonable place to start. And yeah, internal I think, organizing. Oh, go ahead, Kristen. Very, sorry. Internal organizing is always very important. And that's something that you can do without uh, asking permission from the local, you know, always have membership forms on you. Um, you can uh, advocate for, uh, in the right to work states, which, uh, you know, we have uh, that rule down here in Texas, not everybody uh, is required to join the union. So it's really important for us as members, uh, especially right now more than ever, to communicate what the benefits are of uh, being a, a union member to these people. And uh, we can uh, mobilize uh, small units at each facility and uh, communicate with each other um, work with our stewards and our business agents and uh, officials at the local. And if they're not uh, amenable to that, then we can organize and mobilize ourselves. Yeah, and I think, <clears throat> sorry, one of the things that you can really do within the next three to six months um, is don't let cynicism set in. Don't let that uh, take you down a bad path. Luckily, Ohio isn't a right to work state. So we don't have to deal with that that much. But we told Brother Dennis Taylor about that at, when we were arguing with him at the vote count. This, I don't think they understand how much right to work groups will take this kind of stuff and run with it. And it's kind of a disaster. Um, but you can't let that kind of cynicism look. If, if, if you don't pay union dues, uh, you don't support the union and you, you, you couldn't run against that your local officers. You can't run for Dell. You got to pay dues for two years. So just as that very concrete easy reason you should pay dues aside from it's the absolute right thing to do and you need to do it uh, you need to be active in your unions the hardest part i think is going to have telling our members to not let the cynicism set in we have a very active local with very good membership and i can totally understand how people are pissed off we're all pissed off but we're teamsters we have to do something about it 
Uh, so if you want to do the petition drive, do the petition drive. If you want to do mass grievances at work, do mass grievances at work. If you want to do parking lot meetings, do those. I mean, you know, do something, but don't let cynicism set in. Right. And I'm very proud of our local down here, uh, 767, because uh, we had a five and a half hour meeting with Dennis Taylor and we made it crystal clear that we did not appreciate the contract that he had negotiated for us. And so we are seeing right to work states and workers in those states uh, mobilize and uh, support one another. Great. Um, and uh, that's probably a good note to wrap up on as we close in on 10 o'clock. I want to thank everyone so much for joining us on this call. Um, and I will say that one, one other way that you can um, build local solidarity and fight cynicism and uh, build a stronger labor movement is to stay involved with Labor Notes uh, as well. We do a, a national convention every two years that brings together many Teamsters as well as workers from uh, all kinds of unions in all sectors who are building a bottom-up labor movement. Um, we organize lo local troublemaker schools. We have a magazine that uh, you can use, keep up to date on this and, and many other fights. And if you're not already, uh, you know, one good way um, is to join our email list uh, on our website at labornotes.org. Uh, so thanks everyone very much uh, for tuning in on the call tonight. Thanks very much to Beth and Nick and Kristen and Ken uh, for, for fielding questions. Um, it's been a great discussion. Uh, this video is, uh, is now on, on Facebook Live, so you can go back and watch it again and uh, uh, relive it and, and share it with your coworkers. But um, uh, thanks everyone very much and uh, have a good night.